Hey, what's up, Homestead Homies? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Doug. Today we're going to talk about uh, rainwater harvesting and a no-no when you're rainwater harvesting. Uh, most of you guys know because you've been with our channel for a little while, we put in a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system and I have a playlist uh, that we'll link above and down below and over here and over there that you guys can watch if you're not familiar with it. Uh, maybe it'll give you guys some ideas on the rainwater harvesting system you can put in at your place. It's always good to have redundancy. So even if you're on grid and you have city water coming in, uh, if the power goes out you won't have water. So uh, you should have some other means uh, to have water, at least for doing dishes and uh, general uh, hygiene maintenance and stuff like that. So basically what this video is about is we haven't had any real rain uh, since summer of 2016 and then we went into fall, winter, and now we're almost into spring. We have uh, had zero uh, significant snowfall and our tanks are getting down. We're probably under a thousand gallons uh, worth of water in our tanks right now. So um, the reason why I brought you guys in here first is I'm going to show you guys how the water is coming out of the uh, spigot here, the faucet, and then I'll take you up and I'll show you the um, tanks and the system that we have in place, and then I'll give you that big hot tip. Okay, so you can see right here, I'm turning the faucet on. Now we are getting some water, but that's not near the pressure that we're used to, okay? So that's an indication that, it would be an indication of two things. It could be an indication that our filters are clogged uh, and they need to be changed, or it would also be an indication that we're running out of water in our tanks, therefore there's not enough pressure to adequately push the water through the system. Okay, now we're at the bottom where we keep our 3,000 gallon above ground water collection system, okay? The rainwater is harvested off of our largest barn on our property, then it goes into the ground and it's gravity fed all the way over to the log home. We have a whole complete um, series that we did, it's list, uh, I'll link it right here, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. If you want to do this um, on your property, at your homestead, or wherever you are, this is, it's a pretty in-depth playlist and I go over several things that we did and I tell you why we did them, so it's a really good playlist you might want to check out. So we put this inside of this room I actually built this room after the fact because that way I can keep the room warm. Uh, we're in the Midwest, so we get freezing cold temperatures. And then we have a um, stove in here, we have a barrel stove, and you could also use like a kerosene heater or something like that. Um, and then that way it keeps the temperature just above freezing so the tanks don't freeze. And actually our main concern isn't the tanks freezing, it's the ball valves and the connector um, PVC pipes uh, that we're worried about freezing. The tanks themselves, because it's such a large capacity of water, uh, will probably won't freeze. So this is our system. We'll get to you guys over here and we'll take a closer look. All right, so I'm inside the room right now. We have two 1,500 gallon tanks for rainwater harvesting. Um, they are uh, potable water safe and all that stuff. Okay, so they're you know this is these are specifically designed for rainwater harvesting, and then we have a 250 gallon first flush uh, diverter that cleans off basically the roof and then allows the clean water to flow into the tanks. And then going that way, it gravity feeds down to the log home. Like I said, we have a whole playlist available for you guys to look if you want to get some education on how to set up a system like this. Okay. But the hot tip in this video is, right now we haven't had any rain in our area and no snow to speak of um, since uh, summer 2016 into fall and winter and now we're almost to spring um, and we haven't had any water, okay? So the tanks are getting low. We have like less than a thousand gallons of water in our tanks right now and as you saw in the previous clip, um, we're, the water pressure is not coming out of the faucet very well. So I want you guys to know this uh, tip because a lot of you guys are thinking, well, if these get low and there's no water in sight, then I'll go ahead and put city water in here. I can have, but even in our area, we can have water hauled in, uh, city water hauled in, and they'll fill these tanks up, and it's, it's relatively inexpensive. But if you are to do that, you have to disconnect the gutters from your rainwater collection system because once you mix the city water and then you allow rainwater to mix, it's going to cause the water to sour. It's going to get a bad smell and it's basically going to be unusable. It'll be just so, so nasty you won't like to use it. So this is just a hot tip for you guys who are thinking about rainwater collection or if you're already doing rainwater collection and you haven't ran into the problem of needing water um, and you were thinking about having water hauled in, 
just keep that in mind. If you do put city water in the tanks, um, you're gonna have to disconnect the gutters from your system until you've used all the water that you ha had hauled in uh, until it's all gone, okay? So just another quick update. Uh, thanks for checking us out. I'm, this is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we also have a, a Facebook group called Homestead Homies where we're, we're uh, looking for everyone that watches our videos or who homesteads to come there, share their stories. It'll be a great place for everyone to get together and share ideas and learn from each other. We'll see you on the next one.